The path of non-duality and the path of the law of attraction seem to be very separate approaches to the truth of our existence. They do, however, share profound similarities as well as some fundamental differences. The two approaches can be brought together in a synergistic and complementary relationship if we take the law of attraction as being the creative expression of the realization of non-duality. What is non-duality? Simply put, non-duality is to see through the illusion of subject and object and to realize the non-dual source of subject and object and of all existence. How is this achieved? There are many ways and paths in Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Sufism and even mystical Christianity to achieve this recognition. However, in recent times, the Neo-Advaita tradition, drawing mostly on the practices offered by the 20th century saint and sage Ramana Maharishi, has become dominant in the West. Ramana Maharishi's primary practice suggestion was the inquiry, Who am I? Through the consistent application of this inquiry, Who am I? one begins to clearly see that there is no substantive subject that makes up a me. In fact, there is no I or me at all. They are completely illusory. The sense that I exist is merely a practiced and repeated thought. The one who I believe is thinking the thought is itself merely a thought. When the subject is seen as illusory, it is also seen that the objective world is also illusory. All that is left is the non-dual source, one without a second. Both the sense of separate self and the apparent world are both absorbed into non-dual source. According to this non-dual approach, along with a separate sense of self, all personal preferences are seen through as illusory and reabsorbed into the non-dual source. The law of attraction also posits a source of existence. However, the law of attraction does not teach that the separate sense of self is to be transcended in source. Instead, the law of attraction teaches that the separate sense of self, the me sense, is not a mistake to be overcome. Rather, the separate self sense is a necessary and important expression of source. It is here that we need to look at the two fundamentally different understandings of source held by non-duality and the law of attraction. Non-dualism posits the source as being still, static and ultimately all there truly is. On the other hand, the law of attraction posits the source of existence as being in constant expansion, much like the universe itself. Our sense of separate self is, according to the law of attraction, the necessary and important leading edge of this expansion. And it is through our setting and achieving of our personal preferences that the expansion of source is allowed to take place. This, at first glance, might seem a very strange idea. However, if we look to Western science, we see a very similar notion. Evolution theory is predicated on the idea that through the preference for survival, living beings evolve, or in the other words, expand. Over eons of time, everything from amoebas to full-formed animals, through the power of preference, evolve or expand to become better and better suited to their living circumstances. How these preferences are realized and enter the apparent world is part of the profound metaphysics of the law of attraction. If you look around you at this moment, you may notice many human-made objects, things like tables, chairs, cars, houses, a coffee cup, a plate, a plane in the sky. All of these things were once a thought in someone's head. All of these things made the expansionary journey from the subtle thoughts to the gross material. It is this expansionary journey that is at the heart of the law of attraction, the expansionary journey from subtle thoughts to gross material. According to the law of attraction, thoughts, 
become things. When we have preferences, such as for health, a relationship, or any better circumstance of any kind, this is an expression of the expansionary nature of Source via us, as the expressive leading edge of this constantly expanding Source. Source is the vastly greater part of us and expresses its expansionary nature through us, through our preferences. The achievement of our preferences is immediately achieved by Source. As Jesus said, Knock, and it is given. How does Source immediately achieve our preferences? When we have a preference, it is immediately achieved by Source, subtly, that is to say, as thought, as an idea. We have a preference, and it immediately exists in Source, in its subtle form, as thought. Now, the preferences continue their expansionary journey from the subtle form, as a thought, or idea, to the gross form, as a positive change in one's circumstance. We can either be a cooperative part of this expansionary journey from the subtle to the gross, or we can hinder it. We hinder or pinch off the expansionary force of Source whenever we think resistant thoughts. Resistant thought is more commonly known as negative thinking. How do we know if we are engaged in resistant thought? We feel bad. The Law of Attraction calls this our emotional guidance system. Whenever we think negative thoughts, we are interfering with the natural expansionary life force of Source, and so we feel negative emotions, everything from confusion to anger. Thus, the main practice of the Law of Attraction is to think the best feeling thoughts that you can. When it is impossible or very difficult to reach for and think a positive thought, the Law of Attraction suggests meditation or even sleep. The Law of Attraction teaches that meditation is the stopping of thought. And when one stops thought, they also stop resistant or negative thoughts. Sleep, too, is the stopping of thought and resting in Source. This is why sleep is so refreshing. To stop resistant thought is to allow the expansionary life force of Source to once again flow through you. The Law of Attraction calls this being in the receptive mode, that is, relaxed, open, receiving, and allowing. When this is the case, you feel positive emotions of love, joy, happiness, and intense creativity. You will also witness your most cherished preferences start to complete their expansionary journey from the subtle to the gross. Your preferences will become actual in the world. This posture of letting go of effort and allowing is at the very heart of the Law of Attraction. This is why Law of Attraction is sometimes referred to as the art of allowing. From a non-dual perspective, the Law of Attraction is merely the continuation of the illusory me through the mechanism of preference or desire. As mentioned previously, this is because of a fundamental difference between the conception of source in non-duality and the conception of Source in the Law of Attraction. Non-duality understands Source as passive and still, with nothing really existing outside of it. The Law of Attraction understands Source as dynamic and eternally expanding with our sense of separate self as its leading edge in its expansion. Both may be true. Source, as Source, is still and unmoving. Source, as the creator of worlds, is constantly expanding. These may be different sides of the same coin. In fact, in some schools of Tantric Buddhism, exactly this idea is understood. In Tantric Buddhism, it is only after we have realized Source as the ground of reality that we can then move back into the apparent world as Master Creators. In this approach, we know Source in both its unmoving and moving aspects. This is known is the liberation of illusion. Once we have liberated illusion, we are free to play with our illusory selves and the illusory world, or what is called in the Hindu tradition, Leela, or the play of God. When we understand our preferences and desires as always achieved, at least in subtle form, in source, and that our part is to surrender, let be, and allow the desire 
its expansionary journey from subtle to gross, then maybe life does indeed become divine play.